Today, we're going to talk about aquatic therapy and whether or not it is the right therapy for you. If you're new to this channel, I'm Tara. I'm a neurologic physical therapist. And on this channel, we talk about anything and everything related to mobility, health, fitness, and mindset with the end goal of empowering you with as many tools as possible to live an overall more active, healthier, more fulfilled life. And with all that said, today we're going to talk about the pros and cons of aquatic therapy. So this is a question that comes up quite frequently and it actually came up recently as to whether or not aquatic therapy is better or worse for you than over ground therapy. So first let's just talk about the benefits of aquatic therapy. So, so there are a ton of benefits to being in water and moving in water. One is, is the pressure of the water helps with swelling. So generally speaking, swelling, decreasing swelling can help with like proprioceptive input through your joints. So it's an extremely valuable for that reason that you might, um, if you do have a lot of swelling in your legs, you might be able to kind of feel movement a little bit better when you're in the water. The other benefit and probably the most obvious benefit is buoyancy. So it decreases some of your body weight. That's a pro and a con, and I'll talk about the cons when we get to that section. But the benefit of that is if you are someone that is getting, has pain because there's just too much weight down through your joints, then water is a good alternative because it will take some of that weight off of your joints. The other one is, is that it offers resistance. So it's a great way to get kind of an overall fitness routine in because moving through the water creates some resistance, which helps to get your heart rate up, especially if you can't walk fast, which is another way to get your heart rate up. But water would be good for that. So if you're working on like kind of a cardiovascular or fitness routine, water would be a good um, alternative to overground because you might be able to walk a little bit faster in addition with the resistance of the water getting your heart rate up a little bit more. And the other one is depending on the temperature of the water we have a pool here um, in my area that is kind of like a therapeutic pool where they keep the temperature a little bit higher so sometimes that can be beneficial if you're someone that just deals with pain. So if moving causes pain and you can get into a pool that is where the water temperature is a little bit lower, then that would be could be beneficial in helping you move with less pain. So that's another benefit. And then the other one is is water aerobics classes. So if you uh, like the idea of being in water, going to most communities have water aerobics, and it's a great way to socialize. So adding a social component to any exercise routine definitely helps it um, to keep your motivation or to get you more in, engaged in the activity. So I think if you're going to a water aerobics class, that would be another huge benefit. Now, before I get into the limitations, let's talk about some of the contraindications. So if you have any type of a cardiac history, you definitely want to talk to your doctor first um, and make sure that they clear you. You don't want to just start getting in the water without your doctor saying it's okay. If you've recently had surgery, so if you have any open wounds, you definitely do not want to get in water with an open wound, especially a public pool, but really any a body of water at all with an open wound and I will tell you that sometimes you may think it's closed but I would really make sure that whoever did that surgery looks at it closely and tells you that 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 incision is closed and that they give you the okay to get into a submerge yourself in a body of water. And really, this isn't a contraindication, but if you've had any illness recently or you've been hospitalized for any reason recently, you definitely want your doctor to clear you before you get in a pool. And finally, and this should be obvious, but it might not be to some of you, if you can't swim, if you can't swim, you should definitely not get in a pool. So those would be the absolute contraindications. Now let's just talk about some of the cons, some reasons why you might not want to get into a pool, especially, or you might want not want to be doing your therapy in a pool, especially if you are in this audience and you watch this channel, a lot of you have had neurologic conditions, you either had a stroke or a brain injury, or maybe you have MS. And there are definitely some cons to getting in water for movement retraining. So I talked about all the benefits of getting in the pool and most of those have to do with fitness but let's say you're in the category where your goals are to improve the quality of your movement which is what I talk a lot about on this channel I would say a pool is not a good idea um, 
therapists still recommend them a lot, doctors still recommend them a lot, but it does not carry over to a gravity environment. So you're practicing in like an anti-gravity environment that will not carry over to walking. So maybe walking's difficult on ground and you might think that, okay, well, let me get in the water so I can work on my technique. They're two totally different environments. So the wa walking in water or gait training in a pool is not going to improve your balance or your body awareness on level ground. In that same category, kind of falls like body weight supported treadmill training. The There's some controversy around that. So if you've ever been harnessed over a treadmill, there is some back and forth. Um, I've been, worked for facilities that have had body weight supported treadmill training systems. Um, I'm not a huge fan of them. I, I don't think that carries over to walking over level ground. Now there is some fitness benefits to body weight supported treadmill training um, similar to water. So those might be some of the areas where it would be beneficial. But if you're trying to improve your walking over level ground, I do not think that walking in a pool is going to do that. Just like I don't think body weight supported treadmill training is going to improve your balance. You're walking over level ground. Now, some facilities have you hooked up to like a safety harness. So I think if you're hooked up to a safety harness and there's slack in it, so it's not actually supporting some of your body weight, that's definitely okay. Um, because you're still supporting your own body weight so but that's a different scenario but definitely anytime your body weight is supported or you're harnessed up um, I don't think that carries over into like everyday walking so that would be the huge downside in addition not just to the walking but just movement retraining in general isolating movement when your body is buoyant and your legs and arms are buoyant you're you're not challenging your body to move in the same way that needs to move over level ground. So I don't even really think it's good for movement retraining. So again, just to reiterate, the things I think aquatic therapy is good for is for um, fitness um, primarily. The big, big, big thing that you have to, the huge alert flag that I want you to get out of this video is that there are contraindications. If you've recently been hospitalized, you have an open incision, you have any type of cardiac condition, you would definitely want to get clearance from your doctor first. And then also if your goal is movement retraining, um, definitely, definitely in a gravity environment is where you want to practice movement retraining. That is the only way that a movement training program will carry over into everyday activities. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. This question actually came from our live Q&A this week where I answered this question live. If you are have questions and you would like your specific questions answered, we do a live every single month. We obviously just had one this week because it's the last Wednesday of every month. So our next live will be June 29th. So if you want your specific questions answered, definitely join us for next month's live and get your specific questions answered. If you're new to this channel, and you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell. If you want exercises throughout the week or you just want to keep in touch, two ways you can do that. One is you can go on, head on over to Instagram and follow us over there, or you can sign up for our newsletter. Link for signing up for the newsletters in the description below. You only get one newsletter a week. I don't bombard your inbox with newsletters. So sign up for that, again, just to kind of stay in touch with us throughout the week. Um, if you want to support this channel, I have also included all the links in the description below to all of the ways that you can support this channel. So definitely head down there if you like what you see and you want to see more of this. Ways to support us are in the description below this video. I enjoyed spending time with you all today and I will see you in the next video. Have a good day.